Well, time to take a look at urban combat. Note that this video is based on a US Army field manual from June 2011. Needless to say, don't try this at home, cause these principles are made for entering someone else's home, not yours. Since we got that flank covered, let's look at the challenges of urban combat before we cover the breaching and clearing of rooms. Now situational awareness is always important on the battlefield and in case of urban warfare this means being aware of both what is happening inside and outside of the structure. This is further complicated by the fact that a building can consist of multiple floors, each with multiple rooms, next to other structures that might be occupied by enemy forces or being cleared by friendly units simultaneously. Besides that, the correct use of appropriate measures is also a major concern due to the small amount of space, the fragile nature of certain structures and or their inflammability. And of course civilians combined with combatants and delayed combatants will make a proper friend or foe identification even more complicated. Now the basic unit used in the manual is the standard four-man fire team. This team ideally has the following layout, whereas the number also determines who goes first in case of this video. Number 1, the rifleman, usually equipped with an M4 carbine or M16. Number 2, the team leader, which has a similar layout to the rifleman and might be additionally equipped with a shotgun. Number 3, the grenadier, equipped with an M16 or M4 rifle with an attached M203 40mm grenade launcher. Number 4, the squad automatic weapon gunner, equipped with an M249 machine gun, also known as a saw for squad automatic weapon. Note, the two four-man fire teams and a squad leader make up a standard US infantry squad according to Field Manual 3-21.8 from March 2007. Now the first step is entering a building and securing a foothold, which is the first room entered in this case. Here we face three potential threats. Enemy outside of the building, enemy inside of the building, inside enemy's ability to engage friendly forces on the outside. Depending on these three threats, the entry point into the building should be selected or created. If the threat level is high, ground floor windows and doors should be avoided. In this case, it's preferable to enter from higher floors or breach holes for entry. Now let's look at room breaching and clearing. How a breach is best performed depends on multiple factors. What size, construction and materials is the structure made of? Because depending on these breaches with certain measures, explosive could actually destroy large parts or the complete building, set it afire or generate too much dust that an immediate breach might be impossible to perform. Another question is, what kind of demolition equipment is available? Breaches can be performed with a foot but also with explosive, even larger caliber guns. Of course, the presence of civilians also needs to be considered. Now to quote directly from the manual. With all breaching methods, if the enemy is suspected to be in the room or has actually fired from the room, throw a flashbang hand grenade into the room after the breach and before entry of the clearing team. It is noted if a fragmentation grenade is used instead that it may require several minutes for dust and debris to settle. A breach is performed by two teams, a breaching and a clearing team. Now there's a variety of breaching methods, mechanical which can range from sledgehammers to crowbars or even applying a hook to a door which is connected to a vehicle, ballistic which ranges from small arms fire to shotgun and rockets. In the manual the shotgun receives a lot of attention because it offers many advantages like ease of training, repetitive use, speed and minimal collateral damage. Additionally shotguns can be equipped with a breacher that allows a proper escape of muscle gases and thus the shotgun can be in direct contact with the target. Another ballistic option is the granite rifle entry munition, which allows breaches from distance between 15 to 40 meters. It is useful against wooden and metal doors unless the latter is reinforced. The manual also mentions large caliber weapons ranging from 25 to 120 millimeters. But notes, however, the collateral damage either from penetration or explosion can be extensive. Typically use these weapons to create a breach and to kill or otherwise incapacitate occupants of the room. So use it accordingly. Then there's of course the explosive method, which is often the fastest and most combat effective method. And finally the manual method, which is either by foot or shoulder. Now there are two basic types of breaching, the close in and the distance breach. The main difference is that with a close in breach, the breach team is located at the side and with a distance breach the team is at the distance. Since the distance breach is a bit more complicated, we take a look at it. Here you can see the starting position while preparing for a breach and entry. Here is the breach team, here the soldiers covering the team, here the squad leader and the clearing team is located here. Whereas the breach side is here 
As you can see, the clearing team has an easy and fast way to reach the entry point once the breach begins. Moving to the entry point is crucial. It is recommended that all available cover and measures are taken to reduce the enemy's abilities and opportunities to engage the team. The suppressive fire, smoke or divisionary measures should be used to reduce the enemy's capabilities. It is important to note that the clearing team approaches the entry point quickly, quietly and in the planned order of entry. Now if the clearing team doesn't use a grenade prior to entering, it is recommended to move from a concealed position next to the entry point directly through the entry point into the building. Which brings us to the next part, room clearing. Room clearing involves seizing control of a room and its inhabitants, both hostile and other, rapidly and methodically by eliminating the enemy, dominating the room and controlling the situation. Typically, a squad leader or a hire finalizes the plan for clearing a room. Four fundamentals are particularly mentioned. Surprise, speed, security and shock. Surprise aims at reducing the enemy's effectiveness by doing something he doesn't expect. There are several ways to achieve surprise. Speed, deception and distraction contributes to it. Speed is swiftness in action. This includes rapid movement but also reacting to the dynamic conditions. Thus it is noted, the key is not how fast you enter the room, but rather how fast you can eliminate the enemy and clear the room. Security is a constant theme that the team should adhere to. The correct balance of speed, security and firepower is the key to success. Finally, shock results from applying overwhelming violence. It's a principle of high intensity room clearing. Shock slows and disrupts an enemy and may even paralyze the enemy's ability to fight or physically stun the enemy. Surprise and speed magnify the effects of shock. Now since we got the fundamentals covered, one key element of room clearing is taking points of domination. Whereas a point of domination allows an occupant to effectively control the room with observation and fire. A typical point of domination is a corner of a room. It allows to cover the whole room although depending on layout and obstruction this might not always be the case. For instance, they should be not in front of doors or windows because they would expose the team members. Depending on the entry points, the points of domination are different. As you can see here from a room with a center entry point and here from a room with a corner entry point. It is important to note that while entering, a following soldier goes in the opposite direction of the preceding soldier, so they complement each other's angles. Now be aware that ideally one room is cleared after another, but this might not be always be possible due to the open doors or openings into rooms. To quote from the manual, if there's a potential or a known threat from beyond other doors or windows, immediately preparation for a follow-on mission should begin. This may include follow-on room clearing, heightened observation or even establishing of a defense. As a final note, during my research on this topic I also asked a bit on the unofficial US Army subreddit and the answers were that in general you should stay away from field manuals. So as always take everything with a grain of salt, as an additional benefit this will also keep your fellow salt miners employed. Now if you're into contemporary warfare on a more strategic and hypothetical level I can prevent Commissar Binkov's analysis of the USA versus China. Or if you want to stick to military history, take a look at my video on Japanese fortifications of World War II. As always, all sources are in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.